In this video, I'm gonna show you how and when to use context menus in Swift UI. The code for this is relatively simple, so I'm using an existing project to give you a realistic example of when and how you might use these context menus. Let me explain the behavior we're going for so you have the full picture. So I'll pull up the simulator and you see we have a map screen. Well, the way Grub works, which is my latest course, by the way, we do SwiftUI, CloudKit, MapKit, but the way it works is you're supposed to check into a location when you're at WWDC. So let's click on Chipotle, for example. You click on that and you can see who's there. But the point is we can put some of this in a context menu for maybe a power user. Like, look, you can check in or check out, right? I just checked in, Sean, I can check out. There you go, we'll check in. I can call the location, I can visit the website, I can get direction. That's what all these action buttons do. So a power user may not want to go into this Chipotle screen every time. Wouldn't it be cool if they could just long press Chipotle and get a context menu of the quick actions, right? They're very familiar with the app. They know they just want to check into Chipotle real quick, long press, check in, done. They don't have to pull up this screen, right? So that's a good example of when to use context menus is you know shortcuts for power users, right? You don't wanna bury main functionality behind context menus, because again, you have to long press them. You might not know they're there. Again, main functionality should not be here, but shortcuts for power users, a great example. Now let's code this up. So we'll get out of the simulator here. Uh, we'll go back to Xcode. I'm gonna make a little room on the left-hand side to make my code easier to read. I'll keep the preview up uh, for now so I can explain the code real quick and you can see what's going on. Cause I understand when you use starter projects, it might be difficult. So I wanna uh, explain that. So here we have our map object, which you know shows our region, shows the user's location, has our annotation items. And for each location, which again is Chipotle, Mezcal, Peggy Sue's, all that stuff, we create a map annotation here based on a coordinate. That's what put these map annotations there. And then here we have our custom map annotation view, right? That's this DDG annotation. And on that annotation, we have a tap gesture that shows that detail view that I showed before where all the action buttons were. So the reason I walk through that is so you know where we're putting the context menus. So let me get uh, rid of our preview so we, you know, we can focus on the code here. So again, we wanna put context menus on this DDG annotation, which is our custom map pin. So you can do it above tap gesture or below tap gesture. I'm gonna do it below dot context uh, menu. Now you see there's two different ones. Now this top one is deprecated. The new syntax is the bottom one. That's the tricky thing with SwiftUI, it's constantly changing, usually a lot of small syntax stuff. So be careful you're not using deprecated uh, ones. So we'll do that context menu. And now you see we get menu items. So I'm gonna hit return here and I get a view builder where now I can put all my buttons. I'll pull up the screenshot of the context menu. Here's where these buttons go. So we write some simple standard button code in the code here, right? So we'll do button. And we'll do multiple trailing closures here with the label. We're just gonna do print statements for now, just cause you know, I'm not gonna actually code all the logic to actually check in based on this uh, button tap. We'll say check in tapped. And then here, uh, the label, we can do a label, right? Cause remember a label has an SF symbol and a, a word. And I'll put a link to the human interface guidelines. Human interface guidelines recommends using a glyph, which is SF symbols uh, or some sort of image to emphasize what the action is. And you'll see us do that. So the label here, we wanna make sure we have system image name so we can use SF symbols. So here uh, I'm gonna say check in. And again, the way the app works, you can check in or out. I would have to write some logic to show check in or check out based on whether they're already checked in well beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial. But now we want system image name and I'll save the time of looking this up in the SF symbols app, but I know it's person.fill.checkmark. So now that we have one, uh, let me run it real quick and show this. Okay, yes, dubdubgrub uses the location. There you see, that's my user location. That's a little red dot. But now when I tap and hold on Chipotle, I get check in. So you see the power user and there's a little SF symbol with the check in thing. So a power user can easily come tap check in and you see we get check in tapped. Uh, but that was an example of one real quick for the rest of them. Uh, you can just copy, paste, paste. We'll do this relatively quickly. Uh, I won't even change the print statement, but we'll just do, you know, call location and that will be phone.fill and we'll do, you know, get directions and that will be location fill. Okay, now we'll run it again. Yes, give you permission for my location. Now when I long tap Chipotle, now look at the options I get. I can quickly check in. I can quickly call the location. I can quickly get directions. Again, a good shortcut for a power user. That way they don't have to navigate to multiple screens. We can give them the quick shortcuts right there. And of course, back in the code, you wouldn't just want to print check in or print call location. You would actually 
use the logic to you know execute that action. But you can see the code for the context menu, relatively simple. I think the key lesson here is when to use them, right? You don't wanna bury main functionality in a context menu. But again, shortcuts for power users, great example. Now, if you've enjoyed my teaching style or you're curious to learn more about DubDubGrub and the app we build here, uh, check out my website, seanallen.teachable.com for information on all my courses. You can check out the first roughly 10% of each course as a free preview to get a feel for them. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.